Read along. Ratatouille. Walt Disney Records. We begin in the French countryside. It is here in a quaint old farmhouse where we meet our hero Remy. A rat with a highly developed sense of smell and taste. In fact, his nose was so good that his dad, Django, made him the official poison checker for the rat colony. His job was to smell every piece of garbage to make sure it was safe to eat. Clean, 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 Arthur, clean, you know. Remy loved delicious food and didn't understand why the rats stole garbage. He tried explaining his feelings to his father. We're thieves, Dad. And what we're stealing is, let's face it, garbage. If we're going to be thieves, why not steal the good stuff in the kitchen? But Django wasn't having it. Stay, stay out of the kitchen and away from the humans. It's dangerous. Remy couldn't help himself. Humans cooked. They took delicious fresh food and did wonderful things to eat to make dishes that were even more delicious. Remy wanted to be able to cook too, just like his hero, August Gustave, the greatest chef in Paris, the only one who knew about Remy's secret love for cooking was his brother Emil. One day, Remy caught Emil to sneak with him into the farmhouse kitchen. The old lady of the house was sleeping in the next room, in front of the TV. Emil was nervous. Not good. Don't like it. She's gonna wake up. I've been down here a million times. She turns on the cooking channel, boo! She never wakes up. Just then, Remy noticed Chef Gustav uh, on the TV in the next room. Great cooking is not for the faint of heart. Anyone can to cook, but only the fearless can be great. Remy felt like the great chef was talking just to him. And the narrator of the TV program continued uh, with some bad news. Gustavo's restaurant lost one of its five stars after a scathing review by France top food critic Anton Ego. It was a severe blow to Gustavo and the broken-hearted chef died shortly afterwards. But Remy had no time to be sad because the old lady was now awake and aiming a shotgun at them. Run! She narrowly missed them, but continued to blast huge holes in the ceiling until finally. A massive chunk of the ceiling came crashing down, and with it came the attic floor and all the surprised rats of the colony. Django um, remained calm and barked out orders. Evacuate everyone to the boats! As the rats evacuated, Remy darted back to the kitchen to retrieve his beloved cookbook by Chef Gestao. Meanwhile, on the riverbank, Django directed the rats into makeshift boats. The, boat, the boats pushed off 
leaving Grammy behind. Hey, wait me! But things went from bad to worse as the old lady reappeared. The shotgun blast hit so close that it knocked Remy on into the water. He climbed onto the book and paddled into a drain pipe after the other rats, but he never caught them. Then, before he could catch his breath, Remy found himself at the crest of an enormous waterfall. He tried to paddle away, but the current was too strong. He tumbled over the edge and into everything went black. That night, Remy awoke in a sever, tired and hungry. He pulled his cookbook, bought a shore and flipped through it. His stomach growled as he looked at the tasty dishes. Then, as he gazed uh, at a drawing of Gustavo, something weird happened. The illustration came to life and spoke to him. If you are hungry, go up and look around, Remy. Well, I... You are an illustration. Why am I uh, talking to you? You just lost your family. You are lonely. If you focus uh, on what you've left behind, you uh, will never be able to see what lies ahead. Now go up and look around. Remy looked through the severed ingrate and decided to go up. He scurried along when a sprite uh, in the form of Gustavo uh, appeared, and glowing and transparent. And transparent. Uh, the sprite spoke, food will come, Remy. Food always uh, comes to those who love to cook. Remy uh, continued on until um, he finally emerged onto a rooftop. There laid out before him like a vast illumination. And Jebel was Paris? All this time I've been underneath Paris? Well, as Remy scanned the city, his jaw suddenly dropped. Gastels, you've led me into your restaurant. It seems as so I have. Yes! Remy and, and the Gustavo and Sprite arrived at, at a skyline light high above the kitchen. There, Remy watched as a short Nasty looking man burst in. It was Skinner, the head chief. A cook introduced the Skinner to a nervous a young man named Linguini, who held out a sealed envelope. It contained a letter from Linguini's mother, who had been Gustavo's girlfriend. Many years ago, she left it for you. I think she hoped it would help me. You know, get a job. Skinner didn't want to hire Linguini. He didn't even uh, bother to open the letter. But La Rouse, uh, one of the staff, told Skinner, we have already hired him. We needed a garbage boy. Oh, garbage. Well, I'm glad it worked out. As the staff 
and said about their work, Remy watched his horror as Linguini accidentally knocked over a soup pot and began scooping water <clears throat> from another pot to refill it. No, no, he is ruining the soup in his excitement. Remy leaned forward and the skylight panel tilted, sending him falling into the kitchen. Luckily, he landed in a sink filled with dishwater. Remy climbed out and dashed for an open window, but on his way he passed over the stove where he spied the soup linguini had ruined. Out of nowhere, the Gustavo the sprite reappeared. You know how to fix it. This is your chance. Gustavo was right. Remy decided. He washed his hands and began to add ingredients to the soup until the pot bubbled with delicious smells. Everything seemed fine until Remy realized that Linguini was watching him. Suddenly, Skinner entered. The soup? Where is the soup? Remy dashed for the window, but Linguini trapped him on the colander. Skinner stormed uh, over to Linguini. How dare you cook in my kitchen? That then a waiter named Mustafa accidentally served the soup. Skinner was furious. Linguini, you are fired. I... Uh, fired? But call it... One of the other cooks tasted the soup. It was delicious. A few moments later, the waiter returned to the kitchen. What did the customer say? It was a critic. She likes the soup. Linguini, Linguini and she sheepishly asked Skinner. Am I still fired? Colette uh, stood up for Linguini, reminding Skinner that chef and Gustavo believed that uh, anyone can cook. Skinner reluctantly uh, agreed to let Linguini stay. Suddenly, Skinner spotted Remy by the window. Rat! After a mad scramble, Linguini forced Remy into a jar. Skinner ordered him to take the rat away and kill it. Linguini hopped onto his bicycle and pedaled off his uh, with Remy. Don't look at me like that. You aren't the only one who's trapped. They expect me to, to, um, to cook it again. I don't know how to cook, and now I'm actually talking to a rat as if you. <sighs> Did you note? You, uh, you understand me? Remy nodded. Whatever you disliked it. Do you think you could do it again? Remy nodded again. The two agreed to work together, and the next morning Linguini entered the kitchen with Remy, hidden in his clothes. Skinner approached him. Now, recreate the soup. Linguini set about trying to recreate Remy's soup. Remy popped out of his shirt have to see Linguini reaching for the wrong spice. With no other way to stop him, Remy beat him on the arm, yelping in pain. Linguini took Remy into the food safe. 
Uh, this is not going to work, little chef. We gotta figure out something else. Suddenly, Skinner opened the door. But before he could see Remy, Linguini shut off the light. Skinner flicked it back on the yelled uh, at Linguini, who was now standing alone. What are you doing in here? Get out! Linguini returned to the kitchen with Remy hiding beneath his chef's hat. Suddenly, Remy looked up and noticed Linguini was about to crash into a weighted carrying a tray piled high with dishes. Remy yanked uh, on Linguini's hair like horses and reins. As the young jerked Linguini backwards in an almost impossible reward under the trade of dishes. At first, Remy and Linguini didn't know what had happened, but soon they realized that, that Remy uh, could control Linguini like a puppet by pulling in his hair. It was the perfect solution. Linguini and Remy went home to practice cooking together. In this new way, after a lot of practice, Remy was able to pilot Linguini with ease. And no one could tell that it was really Remy who was doing the cooking from under Linguini's hat. The next day, Linguini was able to make the soup for Skinner. Hmm, congratulations, but you will need to know more than soup, if you are to survive in my kitchen, boy. Linguini didn't know it, but Skinner had finally opened the letter from Linguini's mother. The letter told Skinner a secret, and that Linguini was actually Gustavo's son. And this meant that the restaurant really belonged to Linguini, not Skinner. Skinner wanted to keep the restaurant for himself, so he didn't tell Linguini. He decided to be so mean to him that Linguini would leave the restaurant forever. First, he asked Colette to teach Linguini how to work in the kitchen. Colette was the tallest chef in the kitchen. And Skinner thought Linguini would give up. But Khalid and Linguini became friends. Linguini worked hard and did a good job. Then Skinner came up with a new plan to make Linguini fail. Now is your chance to try something worthy of your talent, Linguini, a forgotten favorite of the chefs. Sweet bread, la Gustav. Uh, Colette will help you. Now hurry up. Linguini and Colette uh, didn't know that Skinner was playing a mean trick as the result was actually one Gustav had given up and because uh, it tasted so bad. But Remy could tell that something was wrong uh, with their recipe. So he decided to invent his own version of the dish. Linguini tried to follow the instructions. But Remy used Linguini's hair to force him to make the new version instead. The whole kitchen 
was shocked that Linguini had changed <coughs> the dish and waited anxiously to see what the customers uh, would think. Mustafa soon returned and they loved it. I have seven more orders. Remy was very happy and very proud. That night, Remy was out by the garbage cans behind the restaurant. Suddenly, he heard a noise. What a surprise! It was his brother, Emil. Remy and Emil were thrilled. Both of them had been worried. They would never see each other again. Emil took Remy to visit the rest of the rats, who had started a new colony in the cellar. Remy's father greeted him warmly. My son has returned. But Remy told him that he couldn't stay. Remy didn't tell his father, but he wanted to go back to the kitchen and cook. Django suspected Remy was doing something dangerous. He told him to be careful uh, and stay away from humans. But Remy wouldn't listen. Uh, I want to make things. I want to add something uh, to this boat. And with that, Remy returned to Gstaus. <coughs> Later that day, uh, Emil surprised Remy by showing up the, uh, the bunch uh, of hungry rats. Remy called uh, at his brother, then disappeared into the kitchen to gather some food. But the food safe was locked. He searched Skinner's office for the key. Uh, as he scampered onto the desk, a framed portrait of Gustavo spoke to him. Remy, what are you doing in here? Just then Remy found the key uh, under a file labeled. Gustavo, last will. Uh, and stammered. As Remy scanned the document and uh, been noticed, uh, noticed something curious. Linguini? Why would Linguini be filed with your will? Remy opened Linguini's mother's letter and began to read. He couldn't believe his eyes. He's your son? Without warning, Skinner entered. Remy snatched both the wheel and, and the letter in his mouth and dashed away. Skinner chased after him on a moat. By the river, Remy leaped from one boat to another with Skinner hold on his tail. Then in one last Desperate leap, Remy launched uh, himself into the air. The documents uh, in his mouth spread like wings, and he sailed across the water to safety. Later, when Skinner returned uh, to his office, he found Linguini sitting at his desk. You get out of my office. But Colette uh, calmly held up the wheel. It's not your office. You are in this. <laughs>